The ancient builders had a strong preference for step pyramids as architectural structures. It is evident that these pyramids were constructed by an advanced civilization. However, it is interesting to note that these temples are found in completely different regions of the world. For example, the Chichen Itza complex is situated in Mexico. The Pyramid of Djoser is located in Egypt. And Kokir was discovered in Cambodia. Traditional accounts state that these similar step pyramids were independently constructed by distinct primitive societies. It is indeed puzzling that these remarkably similar structures, despite being separated by significant time periods and vast distances, exist. If we were to consider the possibility that they were constructed by a single advanced ancient civilization capable of transoceanic travel, it would imply a level of development comparable to the 20th century. Scientists have come across numerous enigmatic constructions that they struggle to explain, or sometimes don't even attempt to explain. One such peculiar site is the Great Serpent Mound in the U.S., state of Ohio. This hill stretches for 440 meters in the shape of a snake. The age of the complex is still a subject of debate among experts, with the prevailing theory suggesting it was built by representatives of the Fort Ancient Culture, it is believed that the Great Serpent Mound was constructed. Although not everyone finds this explanation convincing, British journalist Graham Hancock expressed doubts about this prevailing scientific conclusion and conducted an alternative study near the Serpent Mound. He discovered a complex of ancient burials associated with the Adena culture, which dates back 1,500 years earlier than the assumed age of the Serpent Mound. However, the most astonishing aspect is that the Serpent Mound seems to rest on the ribs of an ancient meteorite impact crater. Tests conducted on samples revealed that this collision occurred no earlier than 125,000 years ago, leaving behind a significant magnetic anomaly. The area experiences unusual magnetic disturbances, causing compass needles to behave erratically. It was only a century ago that surveyors were able to accurately determine the cardinal points of the Serpent Mound using specialized equipment, while the ancient people managed to do so thousands of years earlier without such technology. Indeed, amazingly, the snake's head coincides with the summer solstice sunset, and the curves of the mound serve as an astronomical calendar. How did ancient people, who supposedly only knew how to build huts and use primitive tools, manage to build this? This raises the intriguing possibility that primitive society simply occupied and repurposed a complex built by a much earlier civilization. In addition, in another part of the world, we found evidence of an unknown ancient civilization with extraordinary building skills. The dilapidated Gobekli Tep Temple complex in Turkey which initially went unnoticed, has attracted attention. Initial investigations showed that it was only built about 2,000 years ago. However, further excavations revealed the presence of at least 16 other ancient underground structures, adding to its intrigue. Indeed, the extent of the Gobekli Tepe complex is fascinating, as it could potentially cover an area of approximately 20 square kilometers based on the discoveries made so far. This vast size is comparable to about half of Manhattan. Through examinations, it has been determined that the oldest of these subterranean structures date back to the 10th millennium BC, predating the emergence of any known modern civilization. This suggests that during that time, hunter-gatherer societies still thrived on Earth, challenging our previous understanding of the capabilities and sophistication of ancient cultures. The sudden unity and purpose behind the construction of the monumental Gobekli Tepe remains a mystery for science. It is perplexing to consider how our ancestors, without the means of communication we have today, could have coordinated such a monumental undertaking. Adding to the intrigue, Professor Giulio Magli from the Polytechnic University of Milan has proposed that Gobekli Tepe was not merely a temple, but an actual observatory. This is supported by the alignment of the middle lines between the central monoliths, coinciding with the position of the star Sirius during the summer solstice. These ancient, unknown civilizations possessed knowledge not only of advanced construction techniques, but also astronomy. The possibility of their travel across the globe is supported by ancient maps, such as the 1513 map that includes the depiction of an Antarctic continent 
The presence of such maps raises questions about how this knowledge was obtained and disseminated in ancient times. The ancient map holds many enigmas, one of which is the surprisingly accurate depiction of Antarctica's coastline, which is now concealed beneath ice. It raises questions about the appearance of the continent in the distant past. Modern science only began exploring such details in the 1960s, suggesting the possibility that they may have preceded us by hundreds or even thousands of years. Could this be linked to the builders of a massive pyramid on the surface of Antarctica? The provided image fragment shows the Ellsworth Mountains captured by a satellite in 2016. Are these remnants indicative of an ancient advanced civilization's metropolis in Antarctica? The map's creator, Sailor Piri Rees, claimed to have copied his sample from a highly ancient document discovered in the now-destroyed Library of Alexandria. It's intriguing to consider the possibility that the ancient builders near the Great Pyramids of Giza might have left behind detailed instructions that have been lost over time. Additionally, the remarkable accuracy of the 16th century depiction of South America on the same map raises further questions. The inclusion of mountains, rivers, and even some lakes suggests that the cartographer had extensive knowledge of the continent. This implies that in ancient times, someone not only observed South America from the sea, but also explored its interior. However, the map does contain inconsistencies when compared to our current understanding of the world. For instance, it shows a small isthmus connecting South America to Antarctica. This raises the intriguing possibility that tens of thousands of years ago, during the era of an unknown ancient civilization, these continents were indeed connected. Indeed, South America has revealed numerous pyramids, and ongoing discoveries continue to be made. Recently, researchers employed lighter scanners to explore the vicinity of a village in southern Bolivia. Surprisingly, beneath the jungle canopy, they uncovered an intricate network of canals and the remains of several stone pyramids. Archaeologists determined that these structures belonged to a previously unknown ancient culture, predating the Aztecs and the Incas by thousands of years. It suggests the possibility that Native Americans were taught complex architectural skills by an earlier civilization, which were later adopted by subsequent societies. However, the theory regarding pyramids in Antarctica is strongly disputed by geologists. They argue that the formation of such structures is not the result of human activities, but rather a specific erosion process, as exemplified by the famous Alpine Matterhorn Mountain. The debunking of a single pyramid does not diminish the existence of numerous ancient human-made monuments found worldwide, many of which exhibit striking similarities. The Gunung Padang Temple, ruins on one of the Indonesian islands, while currently less impressive, were once a pyramid-like structure similar to the Great Serpent Mound and situated within an ancient crater. Scientists propose that the complex should not be older than 9,000 years. However, a recent analysis using radiocarbon dating suggests that if we consider the lower boundary of gaining openings, the estimated date of construction could be pushed back by an additional 20,000 years. Scientists argue that during that time, Earth was in the most severe phase of the last glacial period, indicating that people were unlikely to have the capability to build such large memorial complexes. But perhaps we are overlooking something significant. When we try to fit Gunung Padang into our conventional historical framework, we realize that the Ice Age may not have been as daunting for an advanced civilization as it was for hunter-gatherers. These people could have continued to travel the world and construct their pyramids. After all, pyramids have been found not only in Egypt, but in various corners of the world, such as the Prasat Baxi Chungkrong Temple in Cambodia and the Monte Ducati Sanctuary in northwest Sardinia. It is indeed fascinating to observe the striking similarities among these structures. In Greece, the construction utilizes boulders that are tightly joined together, with no need for fastening solutions. Surprisingly, walls with similar masonry have been discovered near the city of Cusco in Peru, despite the vast distance of over 11,000 kilometers separating these regions across the Atlantic Ocean. The story continues when we examine pyramid monuments in Egypt, Japan, and even on Easter Island, 
where we find resemblances. Even the sculptures within these complexes share common elements. Remarkably, there are comparative facts from Bolivia, Turkey, Indonesia, and Easter Island that suggest the presence of a well-developed suite of shared characteristics, despite the immense geographical distances that separate these locations. It is quite intriguing to consider the legend of Quetzalcoatl, an Aztec god, who is said to have arrived from across the sea in a self-propelled boat without paddles. According to the legends, Quetzalcoatl bestowed upon people unprecedented skills, including the knowledge of pyramid construction. However, this connection is not a mere coincidence. Similar depictions of superhuman figures imparting knowledge are found beyond Aztec culture. In ancient Mexico, this event is captured in stone carvings, depicting a person gifting divine knowledge, which appears reminiscent of a modern bag. Astonishingly, scenes of knowledge transmission by ancient sages can be found all around the world. They have been discovered in the hidden recesses of Gobekli Tipe, engraved on the walls of preserved Assyrian temples, and even depicted in Sumerian art and crafts. These recurring motifs suggest a shared belief or narrative about the transmission of wisdom by exceptional beings throughout different civilizations. If we entertain the notion that an ancient civilization had the ability to cross oceans and impart knowledge to less advanced societies, it would imply a level of development comparable to the 20th century. However, the disappearance of such a society without leaving substantial traces raises questions. In a recent article published in Scientific Reports, American scientists shared the results of their long-term excavations near the town of Tel El Hammam in Jordan. They discovered a layer of soil, about one and a half meters thick, consisting entirely of burnt organic matter, ash, and bone fragments. This finding suggests that the site was the location of an ancient cosmic disaster. Around 1650 BC, the settlement was swiftly destroyed by the explosion of a previously unknown meteorite. Scientists have searched for any references to such a cataclysm, but they only found biblical legends describing the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah as being consumed by fire from the sky. This suggests that myths may sometimes contain elements of truth. While this particular disaster might not have been enough to eradicate an entire civilization, there are ancient legends of global catastrophes that could potentially have some factual basis. Indeed, the myth of the Great Flood is not limited to the Bible. It appears in the tales of indigenous peoples in America and the legends of Australian Aborigines as well. Even the ancient Finns associated this event with the end of the world. If the flood were truly global, it would pose a significant challenge even for an advanced ancient civilization. In summary, Various data suggest that approximately 13,000 to 15,000 years ago, Earth experienced a period of cataclysm. It seemed as though storms were ravaging the planet simultaneously. But what could have been the cause of such upheaval? Soil samples from that period contain numerous deposits of nanodiamonds, microscopic crystals formed as a result of powerful impacts from comets or asteroids. If the flood was indeed caused by the impact, the absence of a vortex raises questions. Richard Firestone, an analytical chemist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California, discovered that a majority of nanodiamonds were present in soil samples from North America. However, during that time, the entire region of present-day Canada was covered by a thick layer of ice. If a comet were to collide with it, the rapid melting of such an immense volume of ice could generate a catastrophic wave resulting in a global flood. Nevertheless, it is uncertain whether such an event could completely eradicate an entire civilization in one fell swoop. Theoretically, a few survivors could scatter across different parts of the world, endeavoring to revive their former greatness and transmitting fragments of their knowledge to other, less advanced societies. Meanwhile, the rest of humanity continued with hunting and gathering, leveraging their existing technology and cooperative skills. However, if a civilization exhausted by disasters could construct such monumental structures, one wonders what they were truly capable of during their peak. If they possessed advanced technology, why haven't we discovered evidence of it? 
While we often perceive ourselves as an advanced civilization that has made a significant impact on the planet's history, the truth is that we tend to overestimate ourselves. If our civilization were to vanish right now, within 200 years, there would be no traces of our cultivated plants remaining on Earth. In 10,000 years, cities would largely disappear, except for sporadic large stones scattered across the globe. Interestingly, we have come across something similar, the Bimini underwater road near the Bahamas, known as the Road to Atlantis, consists of neatly arranged limestone blocks spanning 700 meters. The origin and purpose of this structure are still debated among scientists, with no definitive explanation. However, one wonders where this immense road could have led. Could it be that in ancient times, prior to the Great Flood, the ocean levels were significantly lower and this ancient civilization encircled the planet with such highways? It doesn't sound implausible at all, considering that it would be relatively easy to reach other continents from Antarctica before it was covered in ice. This notion aligns with what ancient maps indicate. It's possible that in the future, we may uncover the remains of entire cities beneath the ice. However, there is a challenge if an unknown advanced civilization existed. If we were to disappear, the glass and plastic materials from our structures and technology would take around 15 million years to decompose. Within just tens of thousands of years, we would likely have discovered similar traces of a preceding civilization. The primary source of our plastic is crude oil, and it's plausible that future individuals might have either failed to find it or deemed it insignificant. It is indeed possible that this hypothetical civilization could have anticipated the detrimental effects of synthetic materials on the environment and consciously ceased their production. This means that their civilization could have been entirely organic, leaving behind no detectable traces. The level of development in a society is not solely determined by technology, but also by its social structure. If the ancient sages did not utilize plastics as we do, they could have explored alternative methods to organize their civilization. Contrary to our preconceived notions, ancient societies might not necessarily have been primitive. This perspective was put forth by American anthropologist David Graeber, who extensively studied alternative social structures in ancient human societies. For instance, even in the early stages of our own civilization, there could have been tribes with a cyclical rotation of roles. Slaves could have become chieftains and vice versa every few months, exemplifying a constant shift in power dynamics. Indeed, according to David Graeber's book, The Dawn of Everything, primitive tribes could have practiced frequent changes not only in personal belongings, but even in names. This constant upheaval would eventually bring everything back to normal. Graeber also explores the concept of eccentric tribes, deliberately rejecting hierarchies. It is possible that a similar principle of social organization was employed by an unknown ancient civilization, allowing them to develop alternative pathways and progress rapidly, even using technologies that appear organic and elusive to us today. In essence, the challenge may not lie in the ancient civilization being highly advanced and invisible, but rather in our own preconceived notions and biases that make it difficult for us to perceive it. However, there may come a time when we transcend these limitations and uncover the missing fragments of this mysterious civilization, piecing together the hints left behind. It is worth considering that ancient people may not be fundamentally different from us in certain aspects. The description in the Indian epic Mahabharata of an explosion as bright as 10,000 suns, followed by a towering column of smoke and fire, with birds falling dead to the ground, does indeed bear resemblance to a nuclear explosion. It is hard to fathom the magnitude of such an event. Do you believe that an advanced ancient civilization truly existed?